There is this big plum tree at the edge of our property, which is like 80% dead. And when it's windy, it's quite dangerous, because the fragile branches could break off easily and damage the fence. So we were thinking about cutting the tree down. But not completely, we would still like to keep it quite tall and use the remnants of the tree for birds or some other way. So wish me luck, guys. I'm going to cut I don't know how many branches, hopefully quite a lot of them. Tommy is working on the garden bed, so I'm going to do this alone. So yeah, let's go. Okay, <laughs> the wood is quite soft, so it's going because the tree is almost dead, but <laughs> it fell down like I was sewing and there was still a part left, but then of course the branch is heavy, so it broke off by itself and it fell down on our roses, but they are quite elastic, so <laughs> it's okay, but I have to be careful. I'm over it. I hate it. <laughs> I cut down like four branches and it's not easy because the branches fall down onto our shrubs or they could fall down onto the fence and everything. So that's why, that's why it's difficult. No, it's not over yet. Tommy as always came for a rescue and we were figuring it out together. Sometimes it was quite interesting, balancing up on the ladder, but what has to be done, has to be done. <laughs> Tommy came to help me and we are working together and it's going better. Even though Peter promised me that I won't have to help him with anything today. <laughs> but this is difficult task for one person. So, yeah, but I think half of the tree, or maybe one third, is gone. Guys, we are done. This is the torso of the tree and we will keep it this way. For the birds, we can put something out there, like, I don't know, a birdhouse or something. Yeah. Look how many branches <laughs> there are. And with such primitive tools, just a ladder and a manual saw, and we did it. So we are amazing. I well can. done. Well done, yes. So the plum tree looks like this on the next day. It's like a haunted tree. <laughs> <laughs> and look, I planted ivy here. Two ivies. Here one, one week ago already. And here is the second one, which I planted yesterday. They are very small, so hopefully they will take and then they should climb up the tree and it would look very nice i think yeah i would like that yeah so that's the plan and we'll see and maybe birds could like sitting here and watching for voles <laughs> yeah that's what we would like as well and the tree is almost dead so maybe some birds would build their homes inside the tree mm -hmm. maybe later when it starts decaying more yeah. and yeah it could be hollow birds and insects yeah
Tommy is weeding out the garden and in the meantime I've been relaxing here. I don't feel like doing anything so this is definitely better for me. And he doesn't mind. His hammock is empty. And yeah, it's okay. He likes working in the garden. I'm weeding out the garden, minding my own business. And suddenly I see a frog here. Yay! In the middle of Aragula. <laughs> And it looks like it's toad. So I got scared at first because I thought it was some rock or mud and it started moving and jumping. Uh -huh. <laughs> and I realized it was a toad. So that has never happened to me before. Yeah, we've never seen a toad here in our garden. Yeah. We see some lizards in the garden and we've seen snakes mm -hmm. once or twice somewhere once. in the corner. Two years ago, yeah. right? So there are a lot of reptiles here, apparently. Yeah, looks like it. So that's nice. Yeah. Toads can eat small slugs, I think. Oh, so really? yeah. So it's good to have them. And flies. That's and also flies. okay with me. Yeah. <laughs> Our cherry tree didn't have many cherries this year, so we decided to go for a short walk outside of our property because there are some cherry trees here out in the open and from what we've noticed nobody ever picks the cherries. Yeah. So they just stay there and rot. And we are on a cherry hunt now. <laughs> we are not expecting many of them, but it's just to eat them raw, nothing to do with them. Yeah, yeah. So we'll see what we discover. There's a small cherry tree here already and it looks like it has some fruits that are ripe. A lot of cherries. Yeah. Definitely ripe. Okay, so we'll pick some of these. Definitely. They look so pretty. And they are yummy. That's good to hear. They are shining on the tree. And you can see that they are in one piece, not like our cherries, which were all like half eaten by birds. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Interesting that they like loved ours. I guess they live there in the garden. They have nests there in the trees and mm -hmm. so on. And here in the fields, maybe there are not so many birds. You don't know. Yeah, it's far for them. Yeah. So they are lazy, same as me. Same as humans. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be tasting along the way. Okay, you are allowed to. Because they are delicious and also I'm thirsty. <laughs> There's water in them. So that's it for this tree. <laughs> and we'll move on onto another one. But this was already a nice success and they are so yummy. They are best when they are raw. Yeah, that's what I wanted to say. <laughs> <laughs> There's no point in freezing them or dehydrating them. This is the best. Yeah, yeah, I definitely agree. Because it was a little bit of disappointment, the freeze ones. Frozen ones, yeah. Yeah, the frozen ones. <laughs> okay. There is a very big cherry tree here. And it's hard to get up there. I don't know if I should climb the tree. There is one branch here and we tasted already a few of them. And these ones are a different variety. These ones are not as tasty. I don't know, 90% of the taste of the previous <laughs> ones was still... <coughs> Yum. Still good. <laughs> Okay, I decided I'm not going to climb the tree because it's so high up, it's impossible to get there. So, just these here and that will be enough. Okay, honey? Okay, just a taste. Yeah, they are darker. Yeah, you need them darker to be sweet. Yeah.
Nice. Yeah. There are also apricots here, just a little tree. They are quite hard, so, but they look ripe enough. Oh my god, this is <laughs> delicious. Wow. But I feel bad eating these ones because this is just a tiny tree and what if someone would want them? So Like us? <laughs> like we us. want them. <laughs> no. I'll have one as well. Yeah, yeah, one for you and that will be enough. So many of them here. And these are the best ones. Yes. No bitter aftertaste here. Yay. Looking forward to these ones. So many of them. Look so good. We decided to stop here because we have already quite enough just to eat them raw and I'm already full <laughs> from all the tasting <laughs> while I was picking so I'm not gonna eat that many today anymore <laughs> I will because I wasn't eating that much while picking so now it will be my time okay. In the evening we were preparing the cherries for dehydration. Removing the pits can be interesting, mainly when they are quite juicy, like these ones were. We also dehydrated a small part of our strawberries. It's very nice to keep them this way for winter. I don't know if you've ever seen this. These bugs are called cockchafer. Other names also include May Beetle or Doodle Bug. At least that's what the internet says. We see them every year. They fly out at the same time every evening in June to find their mates. Sometimes there can be thousands of them, really a mass flight. They are considered not great to have, because their larvas eat the roots of plants, for example potatoes. But luckily we have never noticed any big damage in our garden, definitely not like the voles. Anyway, we hope you liked this video. If yes, give us a like and see you guys next time. Bye!